Hello everybody, it's the Haven here today, and I'm going to be going over the VK4502A once again. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I decided to main this tank for the uh, past week that I've been playing it. It's because with all the new armor buffs that have been coming into the game, for instance, the Ohos, the Japanese, uh, the Strum Tigers, um, the Tiger 2s, just a couple of tanks outright getting armor buffs, I decided to give a tank that has essentially some of the worst penetration tier for tier a go plus the fact that i actually really did enjoy playing this tank the armor on it's amazing um but i have found that there's a lot of things in game right now that yeah they almost require premium rounds so yeah it's not that much fun but for the vk i can definitely say that i have been enjoying this tank quite a bit just for the fact with 200 uh 244 this is really lackluster uh yeah i don't use the top um 88 millimeter just because it does feel like it is uh not worth using 237 penetration which is worse than the uh chieftain t95 which is another tank that i might be playing pretty soon to kind of get an idea how that's performing in the matchmaking right now with its penetration. But with a lot of the buffs that have been going on, um, 245, that's basically tier 7 maximum penetration. Uh, like, the highest they can go is like 245, 275 on a couple of tanks. But a lot of these tier 8s that have been getting these buffs have been making it really hard for even tier 8 to counteract them. Or if you don't have enough premium penetration, uh, you're just going to get mowed over by tier 8 super heavies. So that's kind of where it's at. And with the VK and pretty much everything that they have right now, I haven't really just went ahead and did a whole bunch of stuff here. But to give you guys an idea how I've been performing inside the VK, um, I've been putting in a lot of work in this tank. And originally I was number one, but because I had... Uh, couple of bad matches in a row last night as soon as i got home i did drop down i was originally 6359 but with those few bad matches i did drop down a tad bit but over the past 90 days inside this tank um this was a tank i decided to try and perform my absolute hardest inside so over the past 90 days 65 matches 72 percent win rate uh rank two out of 526 people and yeah, um, I, I've been enjoying this tank a little bit, but it's making it to where you really have to focus out a lot of weak spots. And that's kind of the biggest reasons why I've been playing this tank is to find out those weak spots. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, first two matches. Um, I actually had some fantastic matches inside this tank that uh, I was not recording during. But in the time I played the VK in the past week and a half, the um, entire tree leading to the uh, third mark of excellence, I actually got my hands on a Kalabanov's medal, a Radley Walters medal, um, a 7,000 damage raw match, uh, two matches that were 6,000 plus raw, and then a few that were 8,500 combined. Um, this tank does feel really good. But the second you end up against 10s, it's really all about that weak point sniping and trying to get it to where it's focused out. Now, talking about the matchmaker with class-based matchmaking and a few other things, uh, with class-based matchmaking, this tank actually has been performing pretty decent, uh, but class-based matchmaking, in my opinion, is not the right choice to have. Uh, we've already been through four different matchmaking setups, and none of them have worked. So... Wargaming should probably step up a little bit and admit to the fact that, you know, we're going to be... It's not working. Why not copy PC with their regulated system? I, I truly believe that we should be using that regulated system more than uh, what they think they should be doing. And so with the Oni and the Oho, the Japanese tanks, I, I didn't realize this, but I've been seeing a lot of them on the field. It turns out that they are currently on track and uh yeah they have got a ridiculous amount of armor and they are bouncing um any tank that has got 250 or less penetration consistently you're almost required to fire heat rounds at them now and most tier sevens don't have enough heat penetration to do anything against those tanks so there is that it's not fun 
Um, next up on this tank, its armor is a lot different. You know, I went over that in the first part, going over the rework for the tank, and uh, yeah, there's 200 millimeters of armor. I'm not going to pin that with the standard. Um, looking at with a couple of things that have been going on, that this tank, the way that it's put together, whenever it comes down to close quarters combat, it has a lot of mobility, and it's able to really move around in close scenarios. But whenever it comes down to long range or going over to a completely separate section and just trying to relocate as quick as you can, the tank does tend to suffer because it only goes 35 at, well, 38 at its top speed. And it it's, feels a little weird. 38 top speed, but its reverse speed is an astonishing 16. And I think that's why I kind of felt so comfortable with this at a close quarters brawling matches. Um, along with that, I'm not even using a gun rammer. I'm using vertical stabilizers. Um, so the entire time I three marked this tank, uh, the reload was not the concern for this tank. Even though I only have a 320 alpha, uh, my main concern inside this tank was um, more of landing the shells and making sure that I maintained that alpha more than worrying about like how many shells I'm going to get off in a short time. So with the setup I currently have, uh, reload time at 8.2 seconds. I uh, wouldn't have had my consumable on 7.8. But rate of fire, you know, 7.3 rounds a minute, along with that accuracy of a 0.27 and then 2.08 second aim time. So this thing actually has a really fantastic handling gun. Um, in this replay here, I love the fact that I did this. I told Blade and Puddle, hey, we need to fall back now and drop in the ditch. We need to make sure that we don't lose this backside and get flanked. So, we're going to separate from the front row and head around the rear because there's a lot of us that are in the funnel point down in the uh, choke point at uh, G5. So, we're going to back off and make sure that the rear is, you know, staying together. <clears throat> now, with a lot of the buffs that have been going into the game, um, knowing that they did buff this tank, it is sad to see that they did not buff the premium rounds. But, personally, I enjoy the fact that they didn't buff these premium rounds because it gave me a better idea on how it is with lower penetrating guns. And, um, you know, like, for instance, if you're playing tanks that are preferential matchmaking tanks and you, you're seeing all these newly buffed heavies, it's way too much on the armor buffs, in all honesty. They have made some tanks a bit too powerful, thinking that it's going to be balancing it out. And it kind of sucks to see that these uh, Japanese heavies are just insanely powerful right now. Kind of makes me regret playing this one. And not doing the Japanese heavy. So, 8 degrees of gun depression. You know, it's it's not a bad amount of gun depression in the VK4502A. It's actually a pretty decent amount. With this tank being the way that it is, the frontal armor, it does feel fantastic. Being able to face hug. But whenever you're up against heat rounds, anything with uh, 250 plus heat penetration or 270 plus heat penetration, there is no ricocheting it from the front. They are just going to go right through so, with this tank, I've kind of had to take the time out to learn um, ammunition types that enemies have. You know, like, whenever it comes down to tier 10, I would rather be up against a Chieftain than a, um, Type 5. <laughs> just, just kidding. A Chieftain than a, like, 252U, or a, um, well, not 252U, but, like, for instance, okay, I'm having a brain fart now. Ah, brain fart. Okay. Coming back at it. Um, the 257 has uh, 310, 340 heat pen. It's a tier 9. I would rather versus a tier 10 Chieftain because it has APCR across the board. And with APCR, I can actually ricochet, ricochet that consistently if I uh, plan myself correctly. So taking over the rear, um, it kind of allowed us to fall back and handle it out a little bit. Our heavies in the middle all perished and died by Chrysler K that came up top. So we're just going to be taking the uh, bottom section and slowly pushing up. So, matchmaking, everything else, I feel like I'm a broken record by this point, but class-based matchmaking, guys, it sucks. It really does. The matches have been a little bit more unbalanced than normal. Um, but I don't know about you guys, but I've been to top tier quite a bit more with class-based matchmaking, and it has been nice. Uh, on the 27th or the 28th, I had 12 matches in a row inside the VK4502A, which I maintained a 10,000 WNA. Yeah, 10,000 over the course of 12 matches. And um, 
every single one of those matches, I was top tier. So, there is that. Now, penetration-wise, buffing. Um, its penetration is definitely lacking. This tank is going to be more of a, you know, like you actually want to play and grind this tank out. It's going to be really weak point dependent. But with the accuracy that it has, you, you don't have a problem sniping out the weak points. Um, E100s, they have an arm bar on top that you can kind of easily focus out and consistently penetrate if you're planning it correctly. Then, whenever you jump down to, let's say, uh, the mouse, uh, <laughs> yeah, even with premium, there's nowhere in the front of the mouse you can penetrate, period. You can do absolutely nothing against the mouse. And Puddle and the Chrysler both traded. Nope, oh, Blade got the Chrysler. Okay. I thought they traded. So, kind of just hitting a wall with this, with just seeing how they've been buffing a lot of tanks. And um, you got some tier 8s now that have tier 9 equivalent armor, or even tier 10 equivalent armor. It, it is uh, a little bit overwhelming, in all honesty. Alrighty, so. Sand River, love this map. That was a very good play, by the way. Uh, the falling back, the hitting the back flank, preventing them from, you know, getting cross shots or putting us into a crossfire and more than less forcing them into the crossfire. So 3,600 damage dealt. Uh, these were actually the last two matches that I played inside the tank. Um, I wasn't going to be showing off my absolute best matches because I, I find you guys don't learn a whole lot from seeing the absolute best matches. Uh, sadly, though, I didn't get that call of Bonovs recorded. I, I wish I did, because that would have been really nice. But I do have the screenshot of it. Now, with tier 10s and everything else, um, the overwhelming amount of tier 10s and then the underwhelming amount of tier 8s that end up inside some matches. Like this match, for instance, this is pretty decently balanced out. It's not super crazy for the VK. But there's just... A lot of things that are going on currently with, let's say, map rotation. Um, a lot of the maps are in rotation right now. It's really hard to play some heavies in some of them, especially the slower heavies or even um, very specific heavies. Uh, there are some heavies currently in game that there's only two or three maps that they can really do a whole lot on. But the VK4502A right here kind of feels pretty versatile with its 8 degrees of gun depression. It's decent power to weight. It's actually fantastic frontal armor, um, especially whenever you're side scraping. I haven't really noticed a whole lot with the uh, underbelly of the tank or the under part of the um, right above the tracks with that 20 millimeters of armor where you can essentially fire and send a shell straight into it because of the way that this thing is put together right now. So this position here on not Pearl River, this is a brain fright of a map. I can't remember it, but Hidden Village. Is this hidden? No. It, there's no way. If I was aiming a little bit more left, that would have been a penetrating shot into the uh, drive wheel. But right here, as you guys can see, 390 blocked. Um, that is not the big gun that he has. There's an Oho off in the distance. But 304 dealt. You know, it's... And with a couple of those matches that I did pull out, the uh, 7,000, 6,000 damage matches, um, yeah, it's just consistently in the fight. You are always in the fight you're firing every single time you get the chance to fire and you're not holding back in the slightest so there there is that uh really i don't know what to talk about for the vk or anything really except for this grind um i actually did not play this tank prior to the uh, mark system being added in game i think that whenever i played this tank it was actually at zero percent because the mark system was added right after these tanks were added to the game. And I grinded out the uh, Panzer 7 way before the mark system ever got added to the game. Or I could be completely wrong. But in the course of the 61 or 62 matches that I put in over the course of uh, the past 65 matches over the past week. Um, I went from essentially... 20% or 0% to 95% on this tank. So I essentially three marked it in the course of under 100 matches. It does have a pretty low damage standing, which explains why it is uh, easy to mark with only maybe under a 2400 damage standing. 
And speaking of which, talking about the marking system, uh, I would like to see them kind of bring the marking system back to the old way. Because with this new way that it's put together currently, with the 100% true, you just have people that are extremely competitive grinding out to 100% their tanks and get that fourth mark of excellence. Uh, currently for me, now that I've hit in this um, standstill with the mark at 95, I am not going to be grinding this anymore. I'm actually... Because to me, fourth mark of excellence doesn't look that good. I'm not going to go grind it out. And there we go. Even with the premium shell into the Oho. Um, and we're above him aiming down, so almost flat onto the turret. Uh, we bounce off 200 millimeters of armor. Uh, along with that, its weak spots are now 230. So they're subtracting weak spots. Yeah, these Ohos um, and the Japanese lines... I didn't realize how much these tanks got buffed until I played this tank. Because beforehand, if I had a problem with them, I would load the heat rounds, 270 pen, or maybe even like a 250 armor pen with a heat round, and not much of a problem. But with these lower penetrating, for instance, uh, you guys are going to love this. The new Chesovakian heavy tank line that just came out also has got low penetration rounds for its um, premium rounds at 252 along with the uh, Skoda T-56 at uh, 240. Well, no, not. it's a uh, brain fart. Ah, stuff is in the way. Skoda T-56 at 248. Um, the Skoda might be able to handle it because it's an AP shell, but overall, this has been just crazy to see how much armor those tanks have. Uh, personally, if, if I was in super testing, I would say that that's a big problem that should not happen because it really is a big problem shouldn't happen that's going to cause a lot of issues especially right now since those tanks were able to push up so far and just hammer it out and here we are you know backing up trying to get safe but in fact our team fell apart here at the very end so paused it skipped ahead and third mark of excellence at this match uh, sadly it was a loss but it was a decent amount combined for 28, yeah, 2878 and 1044 assisted. So not overall, it's not too bad, but it could be a lot better. So with the way the matchmaking is and the way that I feel about this tank, it's actually fantastic. Um, I have been enjoying it a lot and can definitely say that it has felt really good to be able to play these tanks. Well, play this tank specifically and learn how it's put together. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys quickly back over to the desktop here. Uh, right here, Radley Walters, 7,000 damage. This is one of the matches I had along with that. Kala Bonov's medal, Radley Walters. And I do believe this was my second Mark of Excellence match as well. And I have a couple more matches um, with this that were just as good. But I'm only going to show off that one. Um, no, I I really enjoyed the VK and grinding out the three marks in this tank. It's been a minute since I've actually taken the time out to grind out a three mark. Because normally it's like once I fully upgrade it, once I ace it, I'm not really worried about the marks. But I wanted to challenge myself with something with lower penetration and to be able to jump into the queues with it and try it out and see how good I could perform. And apparently it was extremely well because I'm a little bit more focused on trying to hit those weak spots, focused on the accuracy of the tank more than a mixed balance, because I want to be able to land those shells with such low penetration. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, commander that's on this tank. This is kind of my general all purpose for the um, E100, and I just decided to throw it down and call it good. So rapid aim, six cents, rapid loading, born leader, clutch braking, off road driving, situational awareness, track mechanic, and controlled impact. So, without a single accuracy perk on this tank, not a single one, actually making it worse with rapid aim, um, I decided to throw on for equipment on this tank. We're going to be running with, uh, it was gun stabilizer, so vertical stabilizer for the uh, shell accuracy, advanced optics, and improved ventilation. And with that combined, it gives us 0.27 accuracy, 2.08 aim time, and... The thing just performed fantastic with this. Its gun is absolutely phenomenal. And now that I think about it, I'm actually going to go ahead and transfer over uh, my accuracy crew, which I'm currently using on the uh, Chesovakian heavy line, which I've already got the eight. 
And that tier 7, I still gotta play the 7, I skipped the 7, not gonna lie, I just absolutely skipped it to the uh, 8. So I'm gonna pay the, pay the gold to be able to transfer this, and take a look at what we get. 0.23, so yeah, the 3 accuracy perks for 0.23, in my opinion, that's just a waste. I'd rather go with the old setup, that way we can benefit from a lot more. Um, other than that, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the fact that I 3 mark this and just pulled my hair out with so many just trying to brain fart it and then realizing how powerful the Oho and the Japanese line is right now and just hating it because they're overbuffed. A lot of things are getting overbuffed. 230 seems to be that sweet spot. You know, VK168P, hatch, 230. Um, Chieftain Mark VI, hatch, 230. Oho, the entire front of the tank, 230. Balanced. Um... Other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. I know that this one was kind of rushed and put together a little bit different. But with the way the game is right now, this was a tank I wanted to play to see what it's like to play with a little bit lower penetration. Um, up next, I'm going to be um, trying to grind out the uh, VK-122. So yeah, the KV-122, it's a tier 7 Russian and that's going to be my next goal to 3 mark. Keep in mind, though, there's going to be a lot of premium fired out of the tank because the 175 just doesn't feel nice. I need that 217 penetration because I've been seeing a lot of 9s because 7 tends to be a good tier but a bad tier all at the same time. So you guys, have a good day. I'm out of here. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. I'll try and get back to you guys as much as I can. Other than that, this was rough, but oh boy, was it fun to get that three mark on this, and it's satisfying. And I I really want to see them revert the um, marking system back to the old one, because with this new one, average players are suffering more than players like me. So that's why I'm not going to 100% this tank, because that just raises the damage standing even more. I'd rather hit that 95 mark and stop. So I'm done. Um, this tank is now going to go gain dust for like five years because I'm done playing it. Yeah.